Hi everyone and welcome to Embedded World 2020 here at the RISC-V Foundation. Let's have a look on the booths. RISC-V Foundation this year is really growing. We show a strong ecosystem. By the way, my name is Florian Wolrap. I'm from Andes Technology, but I'm also a member of the RISC-V Foundation. What we are seeing is that RISC-V is really gaining market traction. We are getting more and more members. We have over 500 members worldwide. There are 60 members only here in Europe. It's amazing. We see more and more hardware vendors coming and here on this booth we have many of them exhibiting their things. <laughs> so let's have a look and talk with some of them and ask them what they are presenting today. This is some of the logos. You see these logos? All of these companies doing RISC-V. It's amazing. We have it from China, we have it from South America, we have Russian guys, of course we have Taiwanese guys, we have German guys, French guys, everyone is doing RISC-V. Let's go to the gentleman from Sci-5, please. Hi, my name is Danny Nativel. Welcome to our booth. I'm from Sci-5. Uh, it's been a, a great show uh, this year at the Embedded World, uh, where we introduce uh, the. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. That's oh, okay. <laughs> well, we introduce uh, our new uh, uh, debug and trace solution. We also showcased uh, demo uh, our security architecture Sci-5 Shield that includes Sci-5 WorldGuard, uh, Arduino Force. Uh, uh, security solution for true hardware uh, isolation for cores and tasks running in an SOC. Uh, so, uh, what are you showing here? So, we're showing uh, the operation of. Oops. We're showing the uh, the wall guard operation. So, it's like a treason thing. Uh, so, we're showing how uh, tasks and cores are separated for each other. And when the core or task try to access a memory that is not supposed to access, it gets an exception. So we have a core zero on the left and core one on the right. So uh, are you being uh, very busy uh, working with a lot of these uh, logos to create some chips? Yes, we are involved. Uh, we have a, one of the founding members of the RISC-V Foundation, and uh, some of the five partners are also some of our customers. So we are working with uh, uh, significant customers to uh, to uh, get the RISC-V adopted and uh, and make better product and faster product to markets. Uh, what's the adoption? What's the growth? The growth is very significant. Everybody wants to move and get uh, into the, the RISC V train. So uh, over the over the past year, we've seen a significant amount of customer moving away from existing solution to the RISC V RISC V uh, uh, instruction set. Uh, what are the main challenges to create a RISC V uh, CPU? Uh, you first need to uh, have a, a feature parity with the, the older ecosystem. So you need to provide uh, you know, good software, good compatibility with, uh, with previous uh, solutions such as IP, security, power consumption and so on. Maybe let's have a look to the next booth. So the next booth that is Andes Technologies, that's where I'm working from. Andes Technology is a CPU IP company, so we are doing RISC-V IP and then we are selling it to people who are making chips with it. It's pretty cool, it's pretty amazing. Market adoption, RISC-V is really great for AI, for machine learning and all this stuff. You know, with this new market where you have the maintenance predictive or where you have the voice recognition like devices like this, I'm not allowed to show the brand, but they are waking up when you say the keyword and then they are waking up the big system and operating what you want. That's where you need RISC-V, where it really has advantages. Like our little Pikachu here, Konnichiwa! That's where you have our chips inside. This, but it's, it's, it's not RISC-V yet, right? That is not RISC-V yet, but we are working on RISC-V, so the next series will be RISC-V. And Andes is one of the leading providers. Like I said, we are coming from Taiwan, but we see a big adoption in China now and also America and Europe, more and more traction. Also Japan is really hot for RISC-V. And uh, your IP is being used by many different chips? Yes, for example MediaTek, but also big storage manufacturers, so people who are making SSDs using our chips, uh, car makers are using our chips for the car inside, the 360 degrees roundabout view, uh, Bitcoin mining, for example, these guys are looking into our chips where you have some AI, some clever things. And that's the nice thing about RISC-V. You really can have the innovation, you can innovate, you can do your own stuff and you can change the course compared with other big manufacturers who say, ah, you need to take our core, you're not allowed to modify it. RISC-V gives you the flexibility and allow you to innovate and bring it forward. 
So uh, when you uh, uh, CPU IP company for you is is it can be more fun to have the risk V freedom. It is a lot of fun. We have been making our own risk IP before, but now with risk V, all the universities teach it. Say contribute to the open source. I mean, we upstream our codes, our GCC, our U boot. But then you have the universities. They are downloading it. They are teaching it. You have many more companies doing it. It's great. Uh, so very busy in that direction also. We are far, extremely uh, busy. How far do you think it would be for devices like this to have risk 5 in them? Actually not far. We are working on this. So I think we will see this year a lot of devices. There are already a, a microcontroller manufacturer in China who has their first microcontroller on the market with risk 5 You also can license this IP from us for example if you want. It's the same. And we are seeing that it's now also finding adaption in data center. So I know you're always looking for Linux, right, Jabax? Linux, give it one or two years and you will have your RISC-V chips where you're running Linux on it. And then you have setup boxes with Linux. Is it maybe a, a smartwatch company? It's not a smartwatch. It's our uh, partners from Sci5. They have it in a smartwa uh, smartwatch company. We are more in the memory area, in the data center area, and we are also in the AI. Like maybe you hear it from the Bitmain and all this stuff. We are kind of co working with these guys. But the, those chips are actually deployed, Risk V. Yes, yes. They are deployed. You can buy one microcontroller unit on the market from Giga Device. The others are kind of closed source, but they are on the market. They are in mass production and they are really hot. Cool. Maybe we can continue the tour a little bit? Sure. Yeah. So let's go over there. The green Wave, right here. So let's yeah. have a look at Green Wave. Hi there. Um, we are Green Wave Technologies. We are a fabulous semiconductor company from uh, France. Uh, we are designing uh, IoT application processors that are enabling artificial intelligence in uh, battery-operated uh, IoT devices. Uh, we are presenting today the new platform for occupancy detection that we designed with our partner Lin Red. Is there a chip already here? Or what, what are you showing? What is running? So the platform is supposed to be your recording. Yeah. So okay. the, 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 the platform is supposed to be inside, uh, I already removed it, but uh, what it does, it counts people when you pass by. And uh, on the app you can see how many people are there around the booth. Uh, what does the platform look like? So what's the chip? What is our, this is our chip. This is an example of our chip. This is yeah. GAP8. So is that a RISC-V? Yes, it's based on the RISC-V. All right, what's the design of this PCB like this? So this is an example that is currently right now available. So this is a um, micro drone that runs neural network and uh, avoids um, uh, obstacles when it flies. So it's autonomous navigation drone. Like that. So uh, your company designs a lot of chips? Yeah, so we do just, yes, we're a chip company. So our chip already are available online and we have some boards um, for uh, demonstration and prototyping application. You can buy them on our website. Um, uh, what do you think about the RISC-V ecosystem? I think it's uh, really cool. I think it uh, allows um, a lot of uh, startup uh, semiconductors company to innovate. Um, because it's open source, so we can uh, really revolutionize the market of uh, AI devices based what, on RISC-V. What does the open source aspect of the chip really enable you? Um, it helps us to innovate really fast and uh, keep up with the, all the algorithms available in the market. All right, cool. All right, thanks a lot. Let's go. My name is Alexander Kozlov and I'm representing a company called Cloudbear. We are RISC-V processor IP providers. So we are making a series of product lines, so starting from microcontroller level to Linux capable core to embedded compute and the float acceleration for... Uh, what are we looking at here? Yeah, here is a prototype of our dual core Linux capable CPU. Currently it's running Debian on that screen uh, that you can see. It's a Debian Linux standard uh, compiler for RISC-V. 
and um, yeah you can see the camera working quick running so it's prototypes it's run on 100 megahertz only but in ASIC it will be 10 to 15 times faster but what is the chip in there uh, currently this is a FPGA prototype but uh, currently we are developing uh, ASIC uh, for together with our customer based on this core so basically we are uh, IP provider and uh, we licensing uh, CPUs to our uh, customers uh, which make complete uh, chip do you do many chips out there in the market uh, currently not so many but uh, it's evolving, many underdeveloping, and I hope uh, next year you will see more uh, already ready chip. What's the, uh, so you see an opportunity there with the Risk Five to get uh, into doing lots of bunch of chips? Yeah, for sure. So it is uh, growing very fast and uh, predicted in five years we will have uh, 60 uh, billion cores on the market available. 60 billion? Yeah. It containing risk 5 devices. Uh, who, who did this uh, prediction? Uh, there was some market research agencies which uh, are yeah, making the investigation what will be, where risk 5 will be used, what domains. What is this over here? So this is just graphic cards which is driven by our uh, prototype. Uh, so there is, here is a Linux cores, it's PCIe and then they drive the graphic cards. And these graphic cards are yeah, showing this uh, normal Linux uh, on the screen. And where are you based? In Russia. Russia. All right. So exciting ecosystem. All right. Thank you. Cool. Thanks a lot. All right. Let me just kick something off here. Hi, Hi, yeah, I'm Pete Shields from uh, Ultrasoc. Um, we're exhibiting here on the RISC-V Pavilion showing our uh, embedded analytics capabilities. So, um, what are you showing here on the screen? So this is a, a, an example of a typical, the contents of a typical SOC. So the green blocks are the typical building blocks you would find inside an SOC, such as various different uh, processors, maybe a DSP, some GPU, custom logic, all hooked up around some kind of interconnect. Maybe that's a, an Axi fabric or a network on chip. And then all the blue blocks that you see here are the IP components that Ultra, Ultrasoc can provide to give embedded analytics, to, to give you insights into what's going on inside the actual system. So those can be looking at the actual processes, and those processes could be a mixture of processes, so obviously we'll support RISC-V, but they could be also a mixture of ARM and other architectures on the same chip. And then also we provide other modules such as our bus monitor to actually look at the actual transactions um, to get performance metrics and as well actually extract the bus trace from, from the system. And all this plugs together into an infrastructure together with communicators that get that data off chip. And so here we have an FPGA demo board. This is showing three different cores running at the same time. You can see a game of tennis taking place. You see a very simple fractal and a very much more complex fractal. So there's three different cores running simultaneously. And we can do debug of all, all three of these cores on this FPGA at the same time. And we could also look at the, the, uh, the, the bus transactions and debug the entire system to get a good understanding of perhaps where the bottlenecks are and where the performance problems are inside, inside the SOC. So I notice it says winner and security category for the whole show? For the show, yeah. So we won best, best in show for, um, for the security category. And this is for our new uh, analytic module, which we call Bus Sentinel. And this actually sits in the bus itself. It has a, bu a bus monitor, and this is different. The bus monitor just listens to the transactions. The bus sentinel actually sits in between the, the bus master and the actual bus itself. And the bus sentinel can then detect perhaps what are considered illegal transactions. And it can then acknowledge the transaction back to the bus master, but then block the transaction to, to its destination. So that the, the hacked software does not know that the, the transaction has been blocked, but, it, but at the same time it, it blocks the transaction and raises an alarm within the rest of the system. So yeah, so we're very lucky to, to win this award. So this is a new way, a different way to do security? It's, it's, it's one way to do security. So we have various elements that, that we can uh, add to the system to enhance the security. Uh, is this uh, implementing something like a trust zone when it's ARM or is it 
a different area. Where is it? It is a different area. So, so the kind of trust zone is something that would sit alongside um, this. Um, the the bus sentinel itself may be communicating with the uh, the trust zone um, and be alerted to perhaps you know it, it may be configuring the, the the sentinel to determine what is safe and what is not safe. Um, but it also may be you know receiving the alarms. Um, what's nice about this is, of course, is that the, the hacked software running on here would, would not know that, that it's been blocked. The, the, the transaction is responded to in, in the normal manner, but it's actual, the result of that transaction is, 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 is blocked, and so it doesn't actually end up at its destination. So the hacker doesn't know that uh, they're just wasting their time? Exactly, yeah. And uh, Ultrasoc is... is all over the industry of the embedded? Yeah, so we have we have customers in all different verticals, um, high compute, um, automotive customers. So the application to our technology is uh, is broad. Um, it, it's to, uh, initially used during the development of the SOC, so um, it, whilst the design has is, is been, um, been built, it, the, it's first then used in the, in the lab to actually get the, the, the chip out the door, to get the system out the door. But then it con continues being used in the life of the product. So the bus sentinel could then be used to, to detect these kind of um, security issues throughout the life of the, of the silicon. So this award-winning bus sentinel, how far is it from the market? It's still very new. We, uh, we, have, um, we have several customers who are interested. Um, we're going to be um, launch with the, the first revisions of the, of the sentinel will be released in the next few months. All right. Thanks a lot. OK. Okay, let me bring you to the next booth. Like I told you, over 500 members in Risk Five. Here on the booth, we have now 14. Half of them you have seen, and now we will go to one of the next one. Let me introduce you the Open Hardware Group. I think you have heard about them. That is headed by Rick O'Connor. So what these guys are doing, they bring a lot of companies together. They bring a lot of IP together and then they make this IP usable for some chips. So you see we have universities, but we also have big names like NXP was here and many others. So that's really nice. That allows you to use the IP in other products. Uh, I think we should go to the next company. It's Syntacore, my favorite. All right. So I'm Alex, I'm with Syntacore and uh, as a company we are focusing on uh, RISC-V compatible uh, processor IP and we also provide uh, one-stop customization service around uh, those IP. Here on the exhibit we have a few interesting things. Uh, we actually have our smallest core and our biggest uh, cores uh, which uh, support uh, uh, quite uh, heavy multi-core configuration here on the exhibit. So here we have uh, some samples of our completely open source uh, core, which is named which is uh, named SR1, and uh, everything for this core and to deploy it is on GitHub. Uh, quite easy uh, start, sort of uh, self-starting platform. A lot of collateral documentation, etc. But what are we looking at here? What's the chip? Uh, the chip is by our Chinese uh, customer and I believe it implements uh, both uh, uh, sort of uh, power delivery uh, functionality and interface conversion because uh, we think there are different products based on that. Uh, things like that and some uh, cabling connectivity solutions. That's Risk Five. It's Risk Five based, based exactly on our open source uh, design of microcontroller class. So on the other uh, end of our product line is uh, uh, quite capable, uh, out of order, multi-core design, and we have it here on the exhibit as FPJ prototype, and we have live demo. Uh, in which uh, we actually have uh, octa-core system uh, running full Debian uh, distribution. It's FPGA based, but uh, it uh, tapes out this year uh, with one of our customers. We are very uh, hopeful about that project. It was very interesting. So it tapes out. Uh, how's it going to look? The chip. How big is it? How it's, much performance? It's it? uh, it's quite big in terms of performance. The core itself uh, is uh, like mid-range uh, if we compare to the alternative ecosystem. So it's octa core, dual issue design, around uh, five uh, core mark uh, per core. 
uh, fully coherent memory subsystem and things like that but the chip itself is not about that uh, I cannot really disclose uh, what it does uh, because of the customer agreement but they agreed to go public about it later when chip comes back so maybe at that point we will be able to disclose more can you say more about the background of the company uh, are you it says custom cores and tools. Yes. How long time have we been doing this? So we are founding member. We were here right from the beginning. Our core technology is ASIP, so we know exactly how to customize the cores, tool chain and software stacks specifically for the customer task. And before that, we come from like more than 10 years of highly relevant background. We've been doing quite similar things and applying them to some interesting domains in like major multinational corporation, the team which established that company. So how's the atmosphere around these open source uh, cores? It's quite exciting, I would say. So a lot of uh, interest, definitely. Uh, the initial wave was uh, mostly, you know, enthusiasts and maybe startups and other early adopters. And now we really do see how it takes off and uh, uh, major companies uh, starting uh, to pay attention, starting doing something, so we definitely feel that interest. All right, cool, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Hi, good afternoon. My name's Kevin McDermott, and I work with Empiris. In Pyrrhus, we build a software simulator that allows you to simulate a processor before you have hardware. So with a virtual platform, you can test and develop your, your firmware and software, your drivers, all before you tape out. We have a quality model of RISC V that allows you to do verification. Uh, right. so, so what are you, what are you showing here in these papers here? So what we're showing here is a design flow that helps you work through, let's flip this over, this is a, an interesting flow, talks about how to build a custom instruction. With RISC V, which is an expansive an open ISA, allows you to use a modular approach and add different extensions into a potential new hardware design, all to optimize and run your application better. The best way to start with this is to take your application code and profile it and look for good areas of candidate instructions that would help you build a more optimal solution to run your software in dedicated hardware. And at the show you announce... Oh, we've got two announcements here. For the first time, we've done a UVM encapsulation of our reference model in a system Verilog environment. This allows you to do a step and compare in system Verilog with your target processor against the model. And we have a diagram on the back here. This diagram here shows you um, taking a, a directed test or in, uh, compliance tests or a Google random instruction stream generator test, applying that into system Verilog where you can run your RTL model and your, your uh, reference model step by step to compare the outputs. All right, and uh, there's another announcement you said? Yes, the second announcement is we've worked with a company, Mentor Graphics, to develop a verification flow, and which is on the next diagram, which is a way to look at the Questa simulator comparing with the reference model and then do coverage analysis. This is to look at whether you've fully exercised all the corner cases of your processor before you tape out. And flip that over for the diagram. So here we're showing the Google instruction stream generator through a compilation into the Mentos simulator for the RTL, in the Empiris simulator for the reference model, and then you can compare the outputs and then look at the coverage of what actually happened on the processor. So, uh, how would you define the, the, the adoption of the Risk V thus far? Well, in certain markets, when there's um, a new application area such as AI, you've got a heavy workload, uh, big algorithms, lots of data sets, and they're looking at how to optimize the hardware that would best fit that algorithm. So, with Risk V, you've got this modular approach, you can build a clustered array, and you can build custom extensions. That fits very well to these new algorithms. Jeremy Bennett from Embercosm. I'm, uh, we develop uh, open source compilers, in operating systems and pre-silicon models for all sorts of architectures, but a lot of it's RISC-V these days. So what are you talking about here? What do you show? 
this is showing all the places we fit in and it's amazing how much open source there is. From the modelling, whether you're using C-Gen or Table-Gen to make cycle accurate models, QEMU for fast system models, Verilator and GHDL for cycle accurate models, there's even open source event driven simulation traditionally done by commercial companies, but Icarus Verilog is an open source event driven simulation. So you're pre-silicon, you've got your model of your RISC V and then which compiler do you choose? The big ones, GCC or LLVM, we can do those. But the specialist one, the small device C compiler, the Plan 9 C compiler. And of course there are still commercial options, the, the one player left standing in the commercial space, in the, in the proprietary space, is IAR systems, but it's dominated by companies making open source compilers. And then on the right we have all the operating systems and it's completely dominated by open source. You just don't get industry looking at all at anything other than open source operating systems from the big Linux distributions, embedded Linux, embedded free BSD if you want something more secure, the custom uh, uh, in real time operating systems, things like Apache Minute, and then down to the traditional deeply embedded real time operating systems, very lightweight kernels like uh, Zephyr or FreeRTOS. So we provide you with the support all the way through for that. If you've got a custom instruction set extension for RISC-V, we can provide you with a proper compiler that will take full advantage of that. We can bring up your operating system kernel, develop your device drivers to work with that, and all before you've got silicon. So it's like support? We're a service company. Service. Yeah. We're, we're providing the skilled engineers who can do that. We can, you want GCC for your RISC-V extension, we will provide it. You want operating systems for your extension, we'll provide it. Our engineers are deep experts in that field and you do much better by going out and getting someone for whom this is, they live and breathe this stuff than trying to just do it yourself. And uh, there you have a board connected. Let me tell you about this. So this is one of the most widely available ARM boards. This is not RISC-V, this is an ARM board. It's an ARM discovery board. And the reason it's here is one of the initiatives we're involved with is the mBench project. And mBench is a community effort to bring a next generation of benchmarking to embedded systems. And we've used it to benchmark RISC-V, but the baseline on which the whole project is based is ARM Cortex-M4, because your baseline should always be the established incumbent mainstream player. So that's the baseline, and we can compare RISC-V against that, see how fast RISC-V goes, see how compact the code is. And on deeply embedded IoT systems, code size matters as much as code speed. So what do you find out so far? Do you find out that the code is compact? So we find out that the code is roughly equivalent. Statistically, you can't tell this apart. If you're going to choose between ARM and RISC-V, there are all sorts of reasons to choose one or the other. But actually, when it comes to code size and code performance in general, they're about on the par. Cortex-M4 or a 32-bit RISC-V IMC core, they're about the same performance. And uh, are you able to do everything in this field? like? Anything people would want to do? Anything at that low level system level, that's what we do. They're deeply specialized fields. We don't do general support, but we do do um, detailed stuff. So compilers, we've got some of the world's top compiler engineers, operating systems, the same, and that's what we do. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot. Okay. Hopefully you've got enough there that you Uh, I'm Philip, I'm from Codesip. Uh, what we do is that we provide our own processor IP, but we specialize in, specialize in customizations of the IP. So our customers can start off by taking one of our predefined cores, uh, which are all modeled in our own architecture description language, so, so it is much more abstract than just doing the uh, design in HDL and they can do their own modifications which are very often adding new instructions to the model but they can also do some uh, some customizations to for instance the pipeline uh, what is our newest product actually uh, that we're preparing now is in collaboration with western digital who decided to open source one of their risk 5 cores uh, and since they open sourced only the rtl 
Uh, we, we are working with them to provide a support package, which will be a collection of, also, uh, of open source tools, but also some support and scripts and documentation for commercial tools so that uh, developers can start working with the core as easy as possible. So uh, Western Digital is doing a lot of hard drives, SSD and stuff like that. Sure. So does the chip target that market? Yeah, it will be in a flash drive, I think. And so it's optimizing this kind of uh, use case. Yeah, exactly. It's rather a MCU, but uh, quite a uh, high performing one. Um, so uh, how would you describe uh, the, the market adoption, uh, risk five? How, how much activity are you doing in there? Uh, well, uh, we're usually uh, collaborating with, uh, with customers who want to build their SOC on, on top of our course, obviously. And especially the ones who have very specific, uh, specific needs so that they, they can leverage the ability to add their own uh, extensions to the course. So that means some cybersecurity companies or something like that. But uh, we receive actually a lot of interest in the open hardware now. Uh, some companies are interested to use uh, the open sourced RTL. So I think this will be also important part of our business in the future. Well, thanks a lot. Great. All right. So you have seen how RISC-V is enabling a free and open process architecture where everyone can make his own CPUs based on his ISA. You have seen how the diversity of these people from software enabling security, enabling the compilers and then to IP manufacturers of processors. RISC-V, because it's kind of open, because you can make your own processor or you can license it, is such a diverse, such a big field and it's getting more and more bigger. What do you think? Do you have any questions? What is your feeling about Risk Five? Because what we see is that this is the new market trend, and you will see more and more people will use Risk Five. So we I, are very happy. Thanks a lot for doing this tour. It's really awesome. It's too bad I arrived on the last day. The CEO is not here, right? So it's what a was pity. Callista. Can you say some more? Yes. Callista was actually talking of the transformation we are seeing in this industry, of the transformation. You know when you started in the beginning, you had these guys who are making processors and it was faster, 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 more transistors. But Moore's law is kind of coming to an end and we need to find more diverse ways to innovate. We need to find something how to make it faster without packing double of the transistors inside. And that's where Risk Five comes in, where you can make your own instruction, where you can make your own special hardware, software IP. All the big universities started to switch their teaching. They are now teaching with Risk Five, And that means the students coming out of university will know how to use Risk Five. Look at all these people, it's amazing coming together in the industry and making this new Risk Five architecture. So that is Callista's message and that's why we have the Risk Five Foundation to push this, to allow companies like Andis but also others like Syntacore you have seen or Sci5 to generate this new market, to bring this new dynamic inside and really create and innovate new applications for microcontrollers. So uh, it's five years now, right? Risk Five, five years old? I Roughly, mean, yes. Really, but I mean, the, there was some launch five years ago. Yeah, that was when we founded maybe. the foundation. A lot of people you saw here today have been starting from the first minute, but the foundation is now five years old. That is correct. And it's coming from UC Berkeley, the university in the United States. They had some tries before, but yes, five years since we have this foundation and what's more and more members. What's happening in the next five years? And the next five years? That is my personal opinion. I'm going a little bit bold, but if you see all this stuff, in five years we will have mobile phones running on Risk Five. So there might be other cores inside, but we will have it powered on Risk Five with Linux, with Android running on it natively, with full speed, like you're used today.